guys, I'm really excited to share with you the processes of proper preparation when you're restoring door sills and front entry doors, entryways in general in a historic home, but really also it does apply to all homes because our entryways get used and abused. They're high traffic areas. So when I started on this awesome project, which we'll be sharing with you for quite some time, everything was worn. Everything had been really, really beaten up over time, especially our entries, okay? So I actually have already done a lot of the prep work um, prior to doing this demo. Um, so we're, actually, we're at a great point to show you what it's gonna look like. These are the steps that you wanna take, okay? When approaching high traffic areas where there's high traffic footwear, animals, people, traffic in general, you're gonna receive a lot of wear and tear. Those areas will need to uh, be properly prepped, primed, prior to top coats for longevity purposes. So when I first started on this entry project, we went ahead and removed all of our peeling, failing paint that occurs on all homes over time with our scrapers. Very, very simple. I actually like using the two and a half inch, the one and a half inch, and just a 14 in one tool to remove all loose paint, which actually is done really easily by hand. Following removing the loose paint, I bring in my five inch orbital sanders. I have the best tool five inch orbital sanders, which are great for interior projects. Then I also have my DeWalt, which are really kind of heavy duty. They can take a beating and they're not as expensive, so it's okay uh, if they don't have that long of a life. So my DeWalt five inch orbital sanders take different grits of paper. I used a 120 to take care of this entry, bringing down all of the high high um, ridges of the old paint that was still existing in order to give me a nice smooth surface to work with. We sanded down with the orbitals all the flat surfaces. And let me tell you, this was in rough shape. There was layers and layers of paint and wear and tear and history and times because this house hadn't actually been addressed in I would say 50 years or so. So when we went ahead and applied our orbital sanders, we did a number on this house and now it is looking fantastic. After we used our orbital sanders, I did do a hand sand. Here, I've got my great Festool sanding blocks, okay? You don't have to get Festool. You can use Norton sanding blocks or anything you find at your local hardware store. You take your sanding blocks, okay? Often they already are, are, have a pre-grit on them. This one actually is a 60 grit. That's pretty rough. 100 grit, 120 grit, and then the finer grits are 180 to 220. That's for smoothing out your surfaces and prepping for your top coats. This here is an 80. I just want to show you how these sanding blocks work. Little elbow grease. Really gets you up close and personal with your projects. I like that. Anyways, with my sanding blocks, once I have completed sanding with my orbital sanders, I go ahead and do a hand sand with the sanding block, generally with a 180 grit to a 220. I'm gonna make these surfaces nice and smooth. If I need to apply any Bondo for any heavy cracks or any filling, that's also when I'm gonna do that. What we're gonna do when we're ready and when we're smooth and our surfaces are prepped, we're then gonna apply, ap apply, <laughs> we're gonna apply an oil penetrating primer. There's multiple oil primers, okay? This here is a cover stain. I like this product because it dries in one hour and most oils can take four hours. A long dry oil can take eight to 12 hours and we do use those in certain areas for certain reasons. Here on our sills, honestly, I do like to go ahead, especially when we're dealing with fall and winter and on, you know, unexpected temperatures, I like to do two coats of this hour dry oil cover stain product. And that's actually where we're at right here. We have our oil. All I need to do is a quick clean, a quick wipe down, and I am ready for my top coat, okay? I'm ready to apply my sill paint. I haven't decided on a damn color. <laughs> There's so many options. Oh boy, but I'm gonna get there. 
before I do that, this is what I'm gonna do, okay? Let me show you. When you're picking your front entry color, I make it a point and uh, make it very clear that it's an important statement piece. Um, it reflects how you want your home to be seen. It's your welcoming area. Um, but also, I pick my front entry color to coordinate with the colors that I've chosen for the rest of the house. Living in New England, working in New England, I do choose a lot of my colors from the historic palette. Picking my front entry door really has a lot to do with the personality of the home and the location of the home, where it sits on the property, um, how the sun hits it. I kind of let colors speak to me. What color speaks to me when I pull up to my house, what do I see? These things are important. I started to realize with the setting and the trees and the leaves, I decided that I really liked one of these three colors. I thought that they were perfect. I went ahead and, all right, I purchased my favorite, Benjamin Moore exterior. This is the soft gloss. This is like a semi-gloss. This is what I want to use on my doors and my trim, a soft gloss, okay? I ordered a quart because that's all I'm going to need, even with two coats. So what we do is we go ahead and we pop the lid, all right? I've already done that, but I do want to show off this tool, which you can get at your hardware store. It's the 14 in one. It's a hammer. It's all sorts of wonderful things. A scraper. Um, and of course, we use this here, this little edge here, to pop the tops of all of our paint cans, okay? This one was open, but generally, it takes about three little clips. One, two, three. What I like about this handy pail is this. It has a magnet to hold my brush, all right? That's what I love about this. I pour off my paint, nice and slow. You have to be in control. A lot of people get worried about that, like they can't control it. And just be nice and slow and intentional and you won't have any problems. This is the two inch, no, two and a half inch angled sash. This is my three inch, my four inch mini roller. This is a three eighth inch nap. The lower the nap, the finer the finish. The lower the nap, the less paint it will hold. Um, Getting the paint on using this mini roller, right? It does all of the work for you, okay? I mean, look at that. You're not, I'm not doing much. I'm just keeping a steady hand because I have to do two coats. So this is like my base coat and it's pretty forgiving. I simply have to get the color up there. And then I can focus on my brush strokes and stuff like that on the second coat. What we've got to do is get the paint in there. See, get it in there, push it, and then run it. Flip the brush, I've got built up paint. Okay, I just left myself a palette. Push it, run it, run it. It's so fun. Oh my God, here we go. I'm just adding more pressure to release the backup built up paint in the brush. A little more pressure. Ready, set, run it. And we are almost first coated. Who was that? 12 minutes. Don't get overwhelmed by these um, DIY projects or let me help you with them. Um, the prep work is the most important. Having the right tools is really essential. Orbital sanders are fantastic and your primers are also really important. Oil priming is, is um, usually essential also um, for permanently sealing any kind of peeling paint or alligatoring paint, which we have in historic homes. Um, don't be afraid to embrace your imperfections as well. And I always go for a semi-gloss or a high gloss on my front doors. So here we've got our semi-gloss and I love it. 